Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up, subscribe to this family-friendly channel, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also, follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E, so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. And I give my review and discussion questions at the end. No need to dig around, all of the minute marks are in the comments. It's all coming up next. Got in my face. This video will be a mixture of voiceover and actual episode footage. Iyala wants everyone to see how their role plays in the family based on their generation. There are five generations with a big family gap, which allows them to see matters according to their generational lens. Lula is the foundation, the elder of the family. Herbert is the nemesis because he... In the midst of a family disagreement, he stood with his sister. Justin, who's 28, is Yolanda's eldest son, and he is labeled as collateral damage because he's caught in the crossfire. Derricka, who's 31, is the fallout because of her relationship with Justin because she is the wife. Lauren, who's 26, is also labeled as collateral damage because she is caught in the crossfire as well between her mom and the grandma. KJ is the youngest son who's labeled as ignored because he's so young and grandma doesn't want him to get involved with family matters. Iyanla says that that's old school way of thinking and it's not her fault for thinking that way. It's just based upon her generational thinking, keeping people out of things. Lula is the silent generation. Herbert is the baby boomer. We have the millennials with Justin, Derricka, and Lauren. And KJ is all the way at the end at Generation Z. Iyala wants to know who the breakdown is. And Lula says, well, that person isn't here yet. Love. Iyala wants everybody to know that she's not on anyone's side. The side that she's on is healing. Now it's time for everybody to do their homework assignments and then she will gather everyone to talk. Iyanla wants to speak with Lula first because she's the elder and maybe the root and cause of where the problems began. Iyanla asked Lula, why are you here? Lula and Nancy were together for 45 years. Nancy was white with them both living in South Carolina. And Lula with some sarcasm says, yeah, we were celebrities. And Iyanla says, of course. Also, how brave for the both of you to share your love. A black woman and a gay white woman in the South in the 70s is pretty brave. Lula says it was a struggle, but the love was all worth it. Together, they raised five children. But she also expressed that she hid her true self from her children, not holding hands, showing affection with Nancy because she didn't want her children to see the true person that she was. Lula explains that while Nancy was dealing with cancer, the nurses suggested a self drip of morphine. But if you started that process, that that person would never be able to talk again and possibly not wake up. The morphine drip puts you in a place of transition and Yolanda thought that Lula was being cruel and selfish in letting her suffer. During this time, Lula consulted with her daughter-in-law, Derricka, because she was a new RN and asked for her opinion. Lula felt that she was talking, conscious, and really didn't feel that there was a need for the morphine drip. That made Yolanda very ang angry, and Derricka had no right to say what she wanted to her as a nurse. Lula was frustrated and left to go to the restroom. And when she came back, the drip process had started. Lula says that she never got the time to say last moments and last words with Nancy. And after that, Nancy never spoke again. Iyala points to the picture behind Lula and says that, look, she's been watching us the entire time. Three days after Nancy passed away, Lula has this moment of being in a dark place. So she asked the family to come by and support her. When Derricka arrived, Yolanda said, what is that B word doing here? Lula was so upset. She told everyone to get out and everyone got out except for Yolanda. And Yolanda and Herbert got into a conflict. Herbert had to push Yolanda away because she was all in his face while they were arguing. Yolanda then called the police and pressed charges leading to an assault charge against Herbert. Because Lula sided with her brother in the matter, Yolanda mailed a photo with the B word across her face and the picture also reading, terrible mother didn't deserve a child. Lula does acknowledge that she was in an abusive relationship and Yolanda was in an abusive relationship. 
Yolanda even told her to stay away from her children, so she did. And Yanla points out that this is your reflection of being a part of the silent generation, not stepping up and using your voice and how you feel in certain matters. Iyanla then sits with Herbert and says that we have a lot of in common. We're both baby boomers. I'm a baby boomer from the North and you're from the South. And baby boomers always took up for family. And I call you Uncle Daddy because you are the uncle in this situation, but you are still the elder and no one, none of the kids have any fathers. Herbert wants to be seen as a role model and he doesn't want a woman to see him as a beater by Yolanda. He explains that the day of the altercation, he was just trying to protect his sister and remove her from his face and that Yolanda just exaggerated what happened to the police. He also feels like Yolanda terrorizes the family with calling the police and making a scene. When Nancy was alive, she would buy her obedience. Iyanla then speaks with Yolanda and she claims that she just wants peace and love. It's a long line of dysfunction and she feels that people were just bringing children in the world not knowing who their fathers were. I have four siblings and none of us know our father and I looked different than everybody else. I didn't have any self-identity and Iyanla says... You were growing up with two women with no father and no one sitting down with you to explain what was going on. And Yolanda's like, yeah, I was confused and I felt ashamed. She knew th that I loved her and, you know, loved Nancy as well. But Nancy spoiled me more. I called her my godmother because she was more disciplinary. She was more like the dad and very con kind hearted. I knew I could do whatever I wanted with no consequences behind you know, the word. So I felt pretty lonely and I wanted some structure and discipline. And Yana says that what you sent to your mom was out of order. And she said, I was hurt. I just felt that she defended her brother and not me. Well, Iyanla wants to know all of that happened and you had that dynamic with your mom and other people, but why aren't you, aren't you speaking with Justin? Your mom was in an rela abusive relationship. You were in an abusive relationship and your daughter, Lauren was in an abusive relationship. And do you see that dynamic? Do you see that cycle? And she's aware of that. And Yolanda, uh, Yolanda feels that ever since high school, she attracted the abusive type. And Yolanda was upset with Justin because he was friends with the abuser of his of his sister and he got upset when I told him that KJ can't be around that guy either because he's abusive. Yolanda sits down with Justin and his wife, Derricka. And Justin explains the event with Herbert just as the same as he did. And Lula describes that Derricka adds this detail of there was an incident beforehand with Yolanda threatening to, to fight me coming over to our house with the knife. And I was pregnant at the time. And Justin explains that there were all, they already lost one daughter and the fact that their mom was coming over to the house threatening them and his pregnant wife was just ridiculous. And Justin thinks that his mom's anger stems from his grandma confiding in his wife, Derricka, who was a nurse during the time of Nancy's passing. He continues to say, my mom had me when she was 16. She left me and my sister Lauren and moved to New York with the guy that she was being abused by for 10 years. And me and him never got along because he was abusive. He said, I saw my mom with black eyes and everything. She always told me, well, he's my husband. And if I have to choose between him or you, it's going to be him. Now it's time for Iyanla to speak with the younger group, Lauren and KJ. Lauren explains that when things are good with her mom, they're good until you disagree or she you do something she doesn't like and she threatens to do something abusive or call the cops or do something like that. And they both agree. And the Yana says no one is safe in her presence. And Lauren and KJ agree. You know, has she ever cut you off? Iyanla wants to bring everyone together because she wants to interrupt the patterns and behaviors that everybody's been doing. It's the first step to getting the tools that they need for healing. Iyanla says, first, Yolanda, you've got to look across the room to speak to your son, to speak to your mom. And she just wants to encourage everybody to at least say hello and speak to one another before they begin any more exercises. Everyone has to take responsibility in the whole entire family dynamic. 
before letting them continue, Iyanla steps in and she says, look, you need to go and do your homework. I want you to sit back and think of the breakdown and put all of the things you did wrong on the back of your sign. Everything. Have you talked bad? Have you thought bad? Have you refused to forgive? Have you refused to ask for forgiveness? Have you stuck to a story? Have you changed your story? Have you been poorly in making decisions on how you handle things? She tells them to do their homework and to have a lovely evening. Iyanla was completely thrilled. It's day two. Everybody's had a chance to calm down and Iyanla wants to speak with Yolanda. I was in Yolanda explains that the discipline and structure I desired in my life, I found in an abusive relationship. The first time he abused me, I thought, you know, it was just because of something I said. And I told the guy's mom and all she told me was, well, as long as you're not in the hospital, you all right. Everything will be okay. I couldn't even tell anybody else. I couldn't call my mom. I couldn't call, you know, Herbert. Nothing I went through in my life was clear. No one sat me down to talk to me about the birds and the bees. Like nothing. When I got pregnant with Justin, I Justin, I just felt like Herbert cut me off. Yolanda writes on the back of her card that she has inappropriate conversations and she acts out in abusive ways. Iyanla wants her to understand you're abusing others because you've been abused. People don't come to you because you've made it known that you can't talk to someone and that you do have these abusive moments that nobody wants to be around. When you feel a trigger, we need to acknowledge that feeling and figure out how to control it. Now it's time for Lauren to speak her truth to her mom without fear of her mother's reaction. Lauren explains that the first time she had abuse, that when she tried to reach out to her mom or send her pictures of her and her daughter, her mom would, res would respond by basically saying, well, you moved away with an abuser. What do you expect? Yolanda even called the police on Lauren and Yolanda thought that it was a way of protecting Lauren. But Lauren was like, how can you be protecting me and threatening to take away my kids? When I was at school, you called the police and said that if I didn't come with you at that moment, that you were going to take my children away from me. Iyanla explains to Yolanda that you have a terrible affliction with your children and your children are scared of you. You've been hooked on revenge um, and basically who's right and who's wrong. Lauren even feels that her mom is emotionally abusive and she wants to ask Yolanda, are you willing to do whatever it takes to heal? And she says, yes. And I'm willing to back off and trust my daughter's decisions and not judge her all the time. Iyanla speaks with Herbert and his sign reads that I learned not to touch, just walk away and don't respond to any insults. And Iyanla feels like bad because she asked him to be vulnerable and open. And when he did, Yolanda had that outburst. And he tells her, you know, that's not your fault. You know, she can't control how other people act. And Yolanda's like, yeah, I understand that. But, you know, she also shares that when she was pregnant, she felt that you cut her off. And Herbert's just like, no, not at all. That's not something that I would do. That's absolutely not true. If she would have come to me and asked for help, there's no way. I don't care who it is. I would have taken care of the situation. And Iyanla says, I don't think she knew that or she knows that. What I get from you is that you're an OG and you're from that generation that's the protector, the provider. But you're definitely not the conversationalist. And she jokes that, unfortunately, the baby boomers didn't get to grow up with Oprah. Iyala says in a production clip that the elephants, when they get in the fight, the grass suffers and KJ is the grass. Iyala takes note that it's important to acknowledge that his mother's behavior and the situation he witnessed are forming pathways with his brain and his heart, damaging of his damaging the perspectives of good relationships. The good news is that he's old enough to grab the wheel of his own ship and take turns in the right direction. KJ expresses to Iyanla that being the youngest, I'm always confused about what really happened. Everything that he finally hears is based upon he say, she say. Tell him, tell him. 
Iyala needs to talk with the eldest, Justin, and they haven't talked in three years. So she wants to get to the crust of their healing. The last time that they talked, his mother's words were profane and threatening. Both Justin and his younger siblings are terrified to speak with her. On Jason, Justin's board, he wrote that he has an I don't care attitude when it comes to relationships. I don't trust my mom with my heart and I want her to hear me and not tell me what I'm doing wrong all the time and just talk to me as mother and son. Iyamba wants to emphasize that we've got to make sure when you guys talk, it doesn't make you shut down with communicating. So in order to do that, when talking to your mom, you're going to look at me and then I'm going to talk to her. So there is a comfortable environment to where you can feel like you can open up. Justin says that he thinks he fell out with his mom because she's under the impression that he was buddy buddy with his sister's abuser and that just wasn't the case. Iyana then brings Yolanda into the room and she asks her what makes you think that your son will support a man who beats his sister and Yolanda is basically saying well you know they went out on double dates and they played basketball with one another and Yolanda's just like because that's how you see it that's not exactly what happened after Justin reflects his point of view Yolanda wants Yolanda to see how you exposed your son to abuse when you left you left him with his grandma mother and also you remember what other people afflict on you but you don't remember what you afflict on others so justin also expresses that it bothers him that his mom always says that he's not a man you say the face and tell him you don't respect him as a man tell me how that works Yolanda wants Lauren to join in on the conversation because Yolanda needs to see that she also says mean things about Justin to Lauren. And Lauren confirms that there's a lot of back and forth of her talking about her kids and saying negative things about other siblings. And Yolanda says there's a lot of bad behavior from your mother, unfortunately. She wants Yolanda to ask for forgiveness for everything and all the harm that she's caused her son and to please clean the slate. Iyana has Yolanda and Justin breathe into a plate all of the things that have been said or bad things unsaid and then she slams the plate down symbolizing clean slate and that being crushed and out of the way. She wants Yolanda and Justin to go into another room so they can talk. And she tells Lauren that all of the behaviors, all of the things, she's got to stop those patterns so her daughter won't experience those same things. While she's speaking with Lauren, unfortunately, Justin and Yolanda, them in the other room, things get a little heated. Keep it to yourself. At this point, Justin is over it, upset with his mom, and he feels like she's not keeping it real. So what's the point of him even staying and trying to work things out? Iyanla says to Yolanda, like, look, your own kids don't trust you. They don't want to be around you. That's not good. They, they feel that you're dangerous. Step four of AA is that you take a fearless moral inventory. That means that you look at yourself and confess the truth. You confess it to another person that opens up the heart. Can you say to yourself without judgment that I was a horrible mother? And she says, yes. And can you say it to your children? And she says, yes. And Iyala says, now is the time to do so. It's day three and it's time for everyone to hear from the youngest branch, for everyone to observe their behavior. But first, Iyala has an exercise for the family. Iyala says a lot of people take talk about what this person didn't do and what that person didn't do. But one thing about Nancy is that you all agree that she was a very caring, loving person. But you don't live like that. You don't live with that love. And she says, how many of you experience paternal rejection or absence? A few people raise their hand. And whoever raises their hand gets an apple. She then continues to ask more questions. How many experience domestic violence? How many dis went through teenage pregnancy? Miscommunication, dishonesty, withholding information that may be vital to other people in your life. By the time Iyama is done with the question, er everybody has a certain amount of apples. And Iyama says start to put the apples in the basket, but then dumps majority of the apples in the laps of Lula and 
Yolanda, letting them see how their influences have a domino effect to everybody else in the family. Now it's time for KJ to share his insights of his family members' behavior. And the family weaponizes their experiences. And they need to be aware of that. And they need to know that as a family, they need to create a safe space for everybody to say their piece. So he starts with his mother and says, do you feel like your actions have changed? Because you always say to other people, your apologies don't mean anything without action. But you do the same thing. You apologize, apologize, but you haven't shown anyone that your actions have changed. Herbert, I mean, you lost a lot of respect when the incident happened between you and my mom, but I still love you. With Lula, why did you keep your relationship a secret and let us find out over time on our own? And the grandma says that in her time, you kept everything secret. If you had skeletons, you kept them in the closet and you didn't let them out. I never thought that I would cause all of this. I never thought that I would create so much pain and everything that I did was unintentional. To Justin, he wants to know, you know, I was too young to understand why didn't you grow up with us? And Justin explains that your experience was mom, with mom is my experience with grandma. When mom left to New York, she left me and Lauren behind and I felt abandoned. So yes, at times I have a lot of anger in my heart. Iyanla tells everybody these discussions are hurtful, maybe sad, but they're necessary because this is what you all must do in order to move on to start your healing process. You don't want to be able to speak with one another and be afraid of behaviors of everybody else. You've got to let those emotions out and you've got to let those, those experiences out. Now it's time for Yolanda and her mom to have some important conversations. And Yolanda said, you know, Nancy and I, we shared that money situation. You know, she would always slide me on $100 bills and she would give me money all the time. And Lula says, I gave her permission to do that. I gave her the money to give to you. Nancy didn't have any money. And Yolanda's just like, did you hear that? And Yolanda's like, yeah, I heard that. And I knew that was the situation, but it was her words, you know, it was just, she would always tell me, I promise you when I'm gone, you'll be worth real taken care of, well taken care of. And Lula's just like, she knew I would take care of you. Your inheritance comes from when I die. And Yolanda's just like apologizing and for everything that she said and things that she's done. She just wants peace and she just wants to move on with her mom. And, and Yolanda is telling Lula, you've got to share with her certain information about your relationship because it was never those conversations to clarify what was going on between you and Nancy in the house. At the end of the show, Herbert says that he wants to be a role model to the men of the family because they really don't have their fathers. They need to grow and get closer to one another. Yolanda wants to figure out more about her behaviors and triggers with getting help. And Iyanla says that the family has the tools what they need to start their processes, but she encourages them to continue with counseling. Justin wants to move forward with getting to talk to to each other more and getting closer to one another and the family just wants peace the family just wants new beginnings and that is the end of the episode Once again, another amazing episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. This special was two hours. It was a two-hour episode. And I did everything that I could to get all the details condensed as much as possible without leaving out good Detail. So I really hope that you guys appreciate it and thumbs up this video. With this episode, I also noticed again that the fathers were not present for this counseling. And also the other children were not in this episode as well. Yolanda's, Yolanda's siblings. So I'm really wondering why they didn't want to participate. Was it too painful? Or were there still some family secrets that they didn't want to get out? I actually thought it was very very selfish based upon Lula's actions that she wasn't honest 
with her child and probably her other children as well about the backgrounds of their fathers. They deserved to know who those people were. And the fact that Yolanda is at the age that she is in those abusive relationships as well, that she still was questioning where she came from and who her father was. I thought that was very selfish from Lula's perspective. And it was very selfish not to be honest about who the person was that was underneath your roof with your children. Even though that you trust this person to be loving and kind, they need to know the relationship aspect between you and your partner is very, very important. I honestly think that Justin has had enough. He's old enough to know his actions and that the actions have to be followed by her words and not just saying I'm sorry and apologizing for certain things but actually taking accountability for a lot of a lot of the things that she's done also those generational gaps are so huge and in between that as Iyala pointed out it's kind of difficult at times to have that communication and as she pointed out that Lula was a part of that silent generation that didn't say anything they really kept everything to herself and as she mentioned having skeletons and keeping them in the closet but also we see that that has had a generational pass down of secrets and dishonesty and behaviors and so forth it's very unfortunate that the children of Justin and Lauren have that gap as well. I really hope that they start to connect, heal, and the children can learn about each other. They can know more about their uncle. They can know more about just everyone. And that slowly cutting off the things that are abusive in their lives. I also would have loved to have seen the other siblings come just to get an idea of how they felt maybe some video footage something but then again when it comes to television shows maybe they were involved and then they did not sign the consent forms if you film something and then you change your mind at the last minute and you don't sign consent for it to be aired it won't be aired so it's possible that they did go through the process and we just didn't see it I just would have liked to see it because it wasn't answered a lot of questions and the emptiness of not knowing who their fathers were I also think it's very interesting how Lauren, the situation that she's in, is she safe? Is she still in an abusive relationship? That really wasn't mentioned, that part. So that kind of confuses me and it ha kind of has me concerned if her children are still seeing that type of relationship. I hope that Yolanda realizes that saying certain things to her grandchildren that's the main thing i know her children are saying that we don't feel safe and these things are around you but also the significance of you're saying certain things again to another generation of children and justin is so fearful of that that she'll keep that cycle going and then her his kids will grow up hearing those negative things. And I totally get that. If you're saying you're in that healing process, how do I know that you're healed yet? How do I know what you're not saying around my kids? So that scene between him and his sister was very, very vital. Because as Iyanla says, now is the time to create boundaries. You don't want to cut off your sister and your niece and your nephew based upon the relationship that you and your mom have. So I hope that they work out that dynamic I hope that they communicate more I really think that it's sad that Yolanda used calling the cops and being violent it's kind of this this keeping the family walking around on cracking ice like uneasy about where to step and where to go like oh my goodness she's coming what do we say if we don't agree with her what is she gonna do is she gonna lash out on us is she gonna break stuff is she gonna call the police that has got to be absolutely just terrifying to be around somebody like that I can't even imagine I'll always be fearful and just like everybody else I wouldn't want to be around you either so I hope that this family works it out and we get some type of update on them continuing counseling and that everybody gets counseling that they need in order to develop some closure because Yolanda was just at a point where she could just ask those questions and the fact that she moved away with her abusers and left her children behind and they dealt with the abandonment that is a lot i also want to reiterate i say this in every review that with every situation with every session Iyanla helps and her team helps whoever writes into her to give them the tools and the healing they need to start 
to start that process. And when they go on from there, it's up to them to use the tools that she's given them. So I want people to understand that it's not going to be this magic wand fixer upper situation where she just heals everything in that in a, in a couple of days. She starts the healing process in those couple of days. And I hope people see that and realize it. Let me know what you think. Put your comments down below. Please respect one another in the comments do understand that we can agree to disagree. In the meantime, check out those latest videos that I just posted and also other things in the playlist, other awesome movie and television show recaps. In the meantime, I love you guys and stay safe. Bye.